Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming on Caffey. My name is Isaac, and we are back playing some Feed the Beast Infinity for episode 21. And today, I want to dive in again to the world of Steve's Cards 2 and get ourselves a, another Steve's Cards 2 setup. But, but this time, instead of doing a tree farm like we did before uh, on the hill up there, I want to set up a wheat farm for our wheat needing purposes so that we can get ourselves an unlimited amount of wheat for our cow farm and therefore get ourselves an unlimited amount of cows, which will probably come in useful at some point because we always need a leather so the first thing that i'm going to do today is start off by actually building the cart because for those who saw the previous episode where we worked with steve's carts you'll know that it takes forever to assemble a cart in the cart assembler so we're going to go ahead and do that first i've also gone ahead and put a stack of coal into the coke oven because we need twenty thousand creosote oil which we now have uh, so i'm just gonna go ahead and take that out that's all we need which is kind of cool we can leave that there for later on in the episode but the stuff that we are going to make is fairly similar to the stuff we made last time. We're going to make ourselves a standard hull. Fairly standard. I've already gone ahead and made the coal engine and the solo engine because we're a bit complex. And I didn't feel we needed to make them again. The side chests, again, fairly easy stuff if you have all the things you need to make them, which we pretty much almost do. We just need a few of these will take one two three four as well as two of the littler ones and i wish i wish any i wouldn't move around as much it kind of bounces around all the time when we look at recipes and stuff we'll take two of those throw them into the ae system and then we should be good to go nice so right now we have a standard hull some side chests a coal oven and a solar panel this this car right now doesn't really do anything apart from circle around and do absolutely nothing. The main core function of this cart is going to be to farm wheat. And for that, we need either the basic farmer or this guy down here, the Galgadorian farmer. However, the Galgadorian farmer, much like the advanced tree cutter, is very, very expensive, requiring some Galgadorian, which, as we showed before, is very, very expensive. So, we're not going to make that. We're going to make the basic one, which is, in fact, very, very cheap. Only a couple of diamonds, some iron, some gold, and some simple PCBs. And then I think that's actually almost about it. We'll go ahead and throw the cart in. Uh, both of the engines, the side chest, the farmer... And I think that's about it. I don't actually think we need anything else within the cart. I, yeah, I can't think of anything. Uh, there's a hydrator, which we actually might need. That's probably a good idea to make one of those. Uh, I think that's going to go ahead and hydrate the crops as they go around. Do we have any sand? We do. Let's go ahead and smelt up some of these like so i'm not quite sure if we 100 percent need the hydrator uh, when i tested this out in a single player world i used it without a hydrator and it did plant them just fine so i have no idea if we're going to need it but it's always a nice thing to have i'm not quite sure if you can add stuff to a cart once it's been assembled so it's better safe than sorry go ahead and make this thing and we'll just stick it in there it is going to take the time to complete up from 15 minutes to 16 and the hydrator requires at least one tank to work so it's probably going to take it even higher once we get a tank, we'll go with a large tank, I guess. Uh, sounds a bit better than a small one. Uh, so we'll take a large tank and we'll just stick that on there. Where, can, where do you go? Anywhere? Nowhere? Somewhere? Do we need a specific tank? Is there like a tank thing? Oh, down here. Okay. Uh, internal tank. Sure. Why not? Let's see. What's the middle of that require? A tank valve. Fairly easy stuff. We just need some more iron bars, like so. We've got loads of iron now, by the way, uh, ever since we hooked up our A system to that chest over there. I think we've got like 400, 500 iron, which should last us quite a long time. And once we've got our internal tank, we can go ahead and throw that on there. Gonna take 30 minutes to complete. My gosh, that goes up quickly once you've got that internal tank. Jeez. So we'll go ahead. We'll throw some coal in there. It's gonna go ahead and act as fuel. And we'll assemble it. So that's going to go ahead and start assembling. It's going to take 30 minutes, which is why I got it out of the way first. And I thought we were also going to have to wait for some cocoa, some crystal oil in the coke oven. But it turns out this is already done. That's nice. But there is something that I want to do in the meantime whilst we wait for this thing to finish. And that is a little bit of Thorncraft. So there is a block in Thorncraft known as the Lamp of Growth. If we go ahead and look under the Artifice tab and scroll down a little bit to here, you will see the Lamp of Growth. So between episodes, I went ahead, I got the reason. Research. I completed it. Not the easiest of research, but also not very hard in, in general. And if we go ahead and have a look at the recipe for this thing, you'll see that it is an arcane infusion recipe, which is the perfect opportunity to show off this thing over here, which we built a couple of episodes back now and have yet to use. So, in order to make this guy here, the Lamp of Growth, we need two gold, two bone meal, two earth shards, and an arcane lamp, as well as 16 herba, eight lux, and 16 victors, which will of course be in these jars over here, which we'll get using the arcane limb and the 
chemical furnace. So, in order to do that, we're, of course, going to need the, the RK lamp in the middle, which requires some daylight sensor, uh, a daylight sensor, two iron, a block of amber, and some nitro. So... To make this easier, I'm just going to go ahead and take this nitro. Daylight sensors, I thought were going to be harder than they were, but they're actually fairly easy to make. If we go ahead and do something like this, boom, we get ourselves a daylight sensor. Nice. And then finally, we're going to need a block of amber, which, again, sounds more difficult than it is. It's really just amber in, in block form. <laughs> it's really easy to do, like so. Uh, nope, it's not. It's like that. There we go. And for those who don't know, the gramp, the, the, gramp, the lamp of growth uh, basically increases the speed at which crops grow around it when you provide it with the essence, the Essentia Herba. So what we're going to do is we're first of all going to make this thing uh, with, not that thing, we're first of all going to make this thing. We're going to put you there, you there, Nitro on the bottom, and some iron either side. I also went ahead and filled up my wand quite a bit since the end of last episode, so we should be good to go for stuff in the wand. If we go ahead and do something like that, there we go. We also get that 5% uh, V discount from having a gold banded wand, and we can take the RK lamp. Nice. So basically, if we go ahead and take a look back at the lamp of growth, this little out here indicates how the item should be laid around the arcane infusion. Obviously, the RK lamp needs to go in the middle, right about there. We need to have the bone meal. Uh, I think it says specifically earth shards. Because, of course, the lamp of growth is green and it works with uh, with crops and stuff. So we do need some earth shards. So we'll go ahead and take two of those. And we're also going to take... Actually, we're going to take four. And I'll go why, I'll go over why in a second. Uh, we're also going to take four bone meal. And four gold. One, two, three, four. And gold. One, two, three, four. Now, the reason I'm taking double the amount of every single item that we need to craft at the Lamp of Growth is because down here it says instability moderate, which means it's got a moderate chance of becoming unstable during the process of crafting this. And during the instability sort of phase, I guess, items can fall off their pedestals because basically all we're going to do here is we're going to put earth shards like there and there. We're going to put gold down there, not gold, bone meal down there and there, and then gold down, say, there and there. And basically, like I said, partway through, so I'm actually going to move this real quick. Uh, if it becomes unstable, certain things will fall off or disappear, and you have to replace them quickly, otherwise things can get pretty bad pretty fast. Now, uh, the way that I've laid these out is not really in any particular order. You can see it doesn't look exactly like this, and you don't really have to follow this in any meaningful way. You could put, I could put Earth Shard there, Earth Shard there, Bone Meal, Bone Meal, Gold, and Gold. As long as they're all around it, that would work fine. However, uh, if you put them more, like if you kind of try and put them opposite each other and balance things out a little bit, it kind of makes it a bit more stable and less likely to explode all over the place. So also other things you can do to make them more stable as well that you can put around the floor here. But we're not going to do that yet because we don't really have the stuff to do it. And this is going to be a really long episode as it is. So all we need to do now is get ourselves some stuff in these jars. Now, question time, Isaac. Do we have any more jars? Let's have a look. Jar... We do not. Do we have what it takes to make some more water jars? Watered jar. I don't think any eyes going to time out to make it. It is. That's very nice of it. It's some glass panes and a slab. How much glass do we have? We have 48. Nice. I'll go ahead and make some more glass panes. And we'll get some more slabs. Thank you very much. Three might be enough, although I have a feeling it won't be. We'll find out in a second, I guess. Let's throw you on there. And then you up top like that. There we go. We'll take all three of those. And I'm just going to stick these down over here for the time being. And I probably will end up moving these around just because of the way this is going to be set up. I don't want to have to make more essential tubes or valves. So what I'm probably going to do is just move these. Because if you move them, they do retain their essential. So you can, move, you can put stuff in them and then move them around like so. All right, so if we look into the book, we need, like I said before, 16 Herba, 16 Victors, and 8 Lux. And then if we go back in the Thormonomicon to the basic information page, click on Aspects of Magic, and then go across a couple of pages, we see all of the aspects that we have found out. And if we hover over Herba, it tells us which items contain Herba. Obviously, we need 16, and I know for a fact that leaves only contain Herba, which is going to make leaves a very easy one to use, because we don't have to worry about multiple things uh, coming through the system. So... We'll grab 16 of you. I'm also going to grab some coal. Uh, I'm actually going to grab some charcoal because we have a ton of the stuff to uh, to burn the uh, the leaves up with. And then if we do something like this, put you in there, put you up there, and then move you, say, to there. This thing should start to fill up with Herba pretty quickly. We should get all 16 eventually. 
six. It should get there. It really should. I'm really hoping it will. Let's have a look. Is that still? It's still going up. We did make an item, and I can still not remember the item that we made. It's called the this thing. It's called the Essentia Resonator. That's what we made. Uh, this thing allows us to have a look as well inside. I don't think we need it with our, our goggles on, but it's kind of just nice to be able to check stuff uh, around here. And then we've got 16. Nice. Okay, so Herba was kind of an easy one. We can go ahead and just grab that, move it. And for the time being, I'm going to stick it like... Um, hmm. It has to be within reaching distance of this. I think it still can reach it on that wall. But just for safety's sake, I'm going to put it like there. And I'm just going to line up the three that we need. The next thing we need is Lux. Lux, again, is another fairly easy one. We have some torches lying around. So we should just be able to go ahead and grab some of those and do a similar thing to what we just did there. But this time, of course, we're going to have to use these uh, the, these filters a little bit more because this thing... Oh, no, it doesn't. It only contains Lux. Nice. So we should just be able to do that. Put down another jar right about there. And that just starts to fill up with looks. Cool. And then finally, the last one is definitely going to be a hard one. Because if we go ahead and have a look at Victus, which, uh, again, is under basic information, aspects of magic, and nearly all the way at the end, Victus is found in eggs and raw beef. Now, before this episode, we only had eggs. So I was kind of worried that we wouldn't be able to find anything. However, after scanning some of the raw beef that we got from our little setup over here, I found out that Victus is found in raw beef as well. So... If we were to, first of all, drink some apple juice so that we don't walk super slowly, we can go ahead and open up this chest and see that we have a bunch of raw beef. Now, this one is going to be a bit of a pain because it has three aspects inside of it, uh, both Bestia, Victus, and I have no idea what the pink one is, so I'm going to say meat. <laughs> I don't know. But it has three aspects in it, which means it's going to be a pain in the backside to get it to work. But on good news, we've got this thing. We can go ahead and throw you down over here like so and then for the beef what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to put in eight beef in total to get ourselves that uh, all the victors and i think the first one that's going to come out is the meat so let's go ahead and put in eight of this like so and we should see all of the meat come through and then once all that's come through i guess we could probably just move the jar and put another one in there i think that would probably oh no oh oh ah okay i see how it's gonna work yeah okay okay what we're going to have to do with this one is kind of release them one at a time. So now that that's in there, we're going to have to go ahead and close that up. Release that one. Yep, that's going to allow the beast to get through. And then we are going to need one more water jar to make this work. So let's grab some more planks, make ourselves another slab, and then run over to our crafting table of Thorncraft and get ourselves one more water jar. Thank you very much, good sir. And then I think we should be able to do maybe this. No, why why you do Victus again? Oh, um. Okay. Um. Okay, so okay, so it turns out if we look over here we can see what's inside of it. So, uh, I don't know if there's a way to empty this. Ah, there we go. Shift right click to empty a water jar. We want to be careful we don't do that over here. Actually, what we could do is just empty this one out uh, with Beastia. We could just go ahead and uh, throw that down. Make sure that's in there. Okay, empty that out. That should then allow that to pass through into there. There we go. And then once all that's moved through, if Victor appears again, we can go ahead and put it in there. We are going to need to go ahead and throw one more beef in because we wasted some of the Victors. But now we can see Victus is there. We can lock this one up. You'll know it's locked up when that little notch there is pointing upwards. Release that one. Should start to fill it with more Victor. 17 is more than enough. So we should be good to go. Let's go ahead and throw you down over there. And then I believe to kick things off, all we have to do is simply right click on the runic matrix at the top here. And it begins. It's a pretty cool animation. I think it looks fairly awesome. And you can see it's going to start by pulling in all of the Herba. Then it's going to pull in all of this looks. Then he's going to pull in the Victus. Then he's going to start pulling these items in now. Uh, I think this is a really cool animation. I love the way that uh, Azanar works with Thorncraft. He does some really cool stuff. Uh, we didn't need 16 looks. So we needed 8. Uh, I put a bit too many in there. But you can see this is sort of pulling those through. We do have to keep an eye out in case anything breaks or falls off or anything like that. But it looks like we might be okay with this. There goes the bone meal. Finally the earth shard. And this thing should change into the lap of growth. Ta-da! Look at that. Nice. 
and it worked perfectly. So we now have ourselves a lamp of growth. Pretty cool, if you ask me. Uh, I really do like the infusion crafting from Thorncraft. It's just a nice little change to its kind of normal vanilla crafting. How are we doing on our little cart over here? Is this thing uh, doing okay? It is out of fuel, is what it is. So we'll go ahead and grab some more coal. Throw that in there and keep it ticking away. And uh, that's going to take uh, another 20 minutes to complete. So while that's doing that, I'm going to set up where we're going to have this Lamp of Growth and how we're going to get it to work. Because the Lamp of Growth uh, increases the growth time of plants around it when it's provided with Herba. So we have to provide this thing with a ton of Herba kind of consistently if we want it to be able to uh, continually increase the growth rate of all the plants around it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to make some more of these, another uh, arcade limbic and alchemical furnace in the future, because I'm going, to, I'm going to need one over here and one out with the lamp of growth. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one for the sake of quickness, I guess, in the episode. And we're also going to go ahead and make one more arcane alembic, and you'll, you'll kind of see why a little bit later on in the episode. So the arcane alembic, uh, as we saw before, is made with a V filter, some iron, a bucket, and some gold. We do, I think, have a V filter still. Yes, we do. We have a bunch of a bu yeah, we have a bunch of iron, so we can go ahead and make ourselves a bucket real quick. One, two, three, and take all the rest of the iron. We have some gold on us still because we had no unstab unstabilities, no unstableness, maybe. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and grab all of these, throw down some iron here, 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 and here. V filter and gold, and then if we throw our wand in, we can get ourselves another arcade limbic. Nice. So. I'm going to go ahead and sleep because it's dark outside and there are bad guys outside. And those two combinations do not work nicely for me. And then we're going to head outside and set this up how I would like it to work. However, I think we're also going to need quite a few more of these Essentia tubes in order for that to work as well. So let me go ahead and grab you. We're not going to be using these valves because I want this to be as automated as possible. And although these valves do work for doing this, what we're doing here, they're not as useful when we're out and about and we want to have things automated. We kind of have to use them manually. So... Does NEI tell us the recipe for Essentia Tubes, or are we going to have to go ahead and flick through the Thumbnomicon? It does tell us. Nice. Okay, so all we need is Iron, Glass, Gold Nuggets, and Quicksilver. Quicksilver, we've already got some of it from last time. Iron, we already have. Glass, we already have. And then Golden Nuggets, we can go ahead and grab from there. Good stuff. And we should be good to go again. So we could just throw you there, you either side. I think we still have enough stuff in our wand to make this work. And we'll throw you in there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab as many as we can make until our wand runs out. What are we missing now? We are missing Aqua. Okay, yeah. Well, we need to find some more Aqua nodes. We only have the one Aqua node, and it's not a very good Aqua node. It kind of runs out an awful lot, which uh, is not really the best. There is a Witcher's Cat there, which kind of scares me, like, a lot. Although we can go ahead and grab our wand and just kill it from a distance using our shock that we made. No! Woo! Woo! <laughs> the shock that we made before. That thing is always coming useful. But uh, anyway, now we have this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set up. So my plan here, uh, I'm going to release my plan, is to have the track circling this Batania building. It's going to start like here. It's going to circle round and round and round around the whole building. And then to make sure there's no tracks here, it's going to go underground. And then it's going to kind of pop back up. So we have a track that circles this building, planting wheat on either side around it. And then these little holes here are kind of where the lamp of growth is going to come up. So the way I'm going to have this is... I'm going to have it like this. I've made some space already. did a bit of preparing before the episode started. We're going to put down the alchemical furnace. And then, of course, on top of it, we're going to have the arcane alembic. And then on top of that, we're going to have another arcane alembic. Because what we're going to do is... A lot of people in the comment section of the last episode asked me... Why are we keeping all these saplings? Why don't we just bin them? Why don't we just void them like we're doing with the cobblestone? We have no use for so many saplings, and that is where you were wrong. We have all the use in the world for these saplings. So if we go ahead and take some and throw them into that alchemical furnace, what's going to happen is the t one of the two alchemical, uh, arcane alembics even, so many air words there, I'm kind of losing track. One of these arcane alembics is going to start the herba, and the other one will start the arbor, which is the other aspect within a sapling. Look at that, two herba and one arbor. So, if I was to do something like this, we could also use that. Uh, this is the fuel, so I'm just going to throw that in there. And we start to burn this up, we would see 
that Arbor is in there, and then we should see Herber in there. Nice. Okay, so he did it the other way around this time, but still, Arbor is in there, and Herber is in there, which is good, because it means that all we need to do then is simply use these tubes to pull stuff out of the top one, and we can just leave that bottom one where it is. We can just do something like this. If it gets backed up, we can always go ahead and put down a void jar, which instantly voids. No, oh, come on. The jetpack's running out. No. We can just go ahead and throw a void jar down, which will instantly void anything that's placed inside of it, but if we go ahead and is that right? It is. And do something like this. I'm going to have it then come up like so. And then we're kind of going to have it come up and around. And I believe it has to go into the top of the lamp of growth. So we're going to have it kind of leaning like this. Which kind of looks kind of cool, I think. It looks kind of like a street lamp. But that's going to go ahead and sit right about there. And if it gets the right amount of herba, it'll go green. Look at that. Nice. And that lamp, that lamp of growth is now going to affect the growth speed of all of the wheat in this area. And also, I think it kind of looks cool. What are you doing around here? We don't want you anymore. Get out of here. There we go. I love this thing. Absolutely love it. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. Again, something like this i believe it should split it evenly on both sides here uh, but don't quote me on that i might be just completely lying to you there um, and then we're gonna go ahead and again same sort of thing bring this up 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 hopefully we have enough here i think we do you are not supposed to be there thank you and then is it one more and out I think it is. And what I'll do between episodes, I'll go ahead and I'll stick down another lamp of growth. I'll make it in the infusion crafting and stick it right about there. And I say between episodes, I might actually go do that now whilst we wait for the cart to finish assembling, which shouldn't be too long. But also what I do have to do is set up all of the tracks. So uh, you have how long left? This thing has 13 minutes left. So what I'm going to do for the time being is grab myself a some glass. Glass. And do we have the glass on us? Do, 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 do. We do not. Is it still in the arcane crafting table? It is. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go away. I'm going to make myself a bunch of tracks. I calculated we actually need 156 tracks in order for this thing to work, which I think is a butt ton of creosote. So we're going to go ahead and just make a ton of that stuff like that. And let's grab a couple more bottles to fill all of this up with. Like so, we need exactly 20 for this to work, and apparently they only stack in 16, so that's 16, 17, 18, two more, which is one more set, which is about all we could make uh, with the glass we had, throw that in there, one, two, thank you very much, and now all we have to do is make a button of these boards, so... Let's type in track. We need to make a but we need five sets of these to get over 156. And then to get the wooden ties, we need to get some slabs and some creosote oil. So again, let's go ahead and make a button of planks using the button of wood that we have. And we'll do something like this. This and this. Take all of you. Throw you in like so with some creosote, and that should get us a bunch of ties, which we can then go ahead and use to make ourselves some rails. Like so, I guess it's rail beds. And then we can use those rail beds as well as some of these uh, standard rails that I made earlier. And uh, for the time being, I've gone ahead and put down the uh, the rolling machine over here. I'll probably move it at some point, but it was just kind of a nice place to put it for, for power purposes. And now we can go ahead and grab all of those rails. Like so. Nice. And what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go away. I'm going to set up this track going around the building. And I'll actually kind of show you what's going to happen here. Uh, I'm also going to wait for that to finish. But uh, basically, like I said, it's going to circle the building. And it's going to drop them off over there just by the breeder because that's where we want most of the wheat to go so it's going to sort of cycle around the building and once it gets to here it's going to turn in go this way turn this way it's going to go around here there's going to be a cargo manager here ready to take the wheat and the seeds off it it's then going to circle back around head this way go back turn this way and then go back around again and kind of circle the building continuously forever and ever and ever and ever and ever so yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to go ahead and go lay down these tracks, wait for the cards to finish, and I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we have ourselves a modular cart. Nice. So I am just... Oh, look at that. That thing's massive. I am just on the verge of making the second lamp of growth here. So I'm going to really quickly just go ahead and give this a quick tap. Like that. I did go ahead and make another arcane Olympic and alchemical furnace to replace the ones that we put down under the track. And I'm just kind of going to oversee this real quick. To, uh, to make sure that it works. I think what I'm going to do is try and observe it from a distance because there is a little bit of crafting that we need to do. So I'm just going to kind of observe from... Oh, oh, nope, look. Bad things, bad things. Yep, okay, put down another shard. I think we need to block that off first, actually. Like that, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what I meant by bad things. 
Yeah, okay. So if you get any if you get any uh, flux like this, just go ahead and uh, block it off and put some more stuff down. And you should be fine. And there we go. Ta-da! Done again. Nice. Okay. Yeah, now we are left with this tent, which is... Not great, but we'll just leave that there for now. I'll clean that up at some point in the future. Uh, anyway, the last couple of things that we needed to make we would be the cargo manager, which, of course, is required. Uh, I did go ahead and make all the stuff required to make the sinks, which go ahead and get it. And, of course, the detector rail, which we have from before because you make these in pairs. So, if we go ahead and take what will hopefully be our last sleep of the episode, we should be good to go ahead and set all this stuff up. All right, so I'm thinking about having the cargo manager over here. Like I said before, it's going to go right about there. We're going to have to replace you with the advanced detector rail, which is going to make the cart stop when it gets here and deposit everything into the cargo manager. So we want to have it so that green takes from the cart. We'll turn, well, yeah, we'll go, we'll go green. Green it takes from the cart to the cargo manager, and we want it to pull it from the chest. We want to pull from the chest part, which is the part that's going to contain the wheat. And then we want to go from the cargo manager out to the red side. Now I'm thinking about having, hmm, I think what we'll do is we'll have another transfer node there, and then we'll have probably one barrel for wheat and one barrel for seeds, as well as uh, some stuff going into the breeder as well, because, of course, one of the main features, of one of the main reasons why we're making a wheat farm is so that our breeder can continue to work constantly, which will be kind of useful. Do we still have a transfer node? We do. Good stuff. I'll take you. I'll also take some pipes, because we're probably going to need them, and we'll grab ourselves a quick barrel, again, from Jabba. This little guy over here. We'll take two more of those if we can, which we can't because we're missing one thing. Let's go ahead and do that and get ourselves one more quick barrel. Again, there's NEI just bumping around all over the place. We'll take you and we'll see if this thing works. It should work uh, just fine, I think, he says hesitantly. Let's go ahead and throw it down. I'm thinking one barrel. Huge. Okay, now I'm thinking about putting the transfer node on there. We're going to have pipes either side, one there and one there, and then we're going to have a barrel here, and a barrel here. This one is going to be for seeds, and I'm going to lock these to seeds once we get it. This one's going to be for wheat, so what should happen is, it should pull everything out. We want to make sure that, what side is this, red? Yeah, I want it to come out of red to the... No, I think that's right. I think that's right. I don't think we need to do anything else. We just need to come from green into the thing. And then nothing needs to go back into the uh, the cart. So we don't really need any of these sets of anything. But it's going to go ahead and come from... It's going to get pulled out of there. The seeds are going to go to, of course, this one. Because that's the only place it can go to. And then the wheat should split evenly between the breeder and the barrel. And all that's going to mean is that we have a nice supply of wheat going to the breeder. But we also have a nice little backlog of wheat if we ever need it for anything else. So... Again, let's just chop down a little bit more apple juice and uh, see if we have any wheat or wheat seeds lying around in here. I think we do. We have a couple of seeds there. Do we have any wheat is the real question. And the answer is yes, we do. We have one. Wow, okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. I was really expecting to, uh, to not have anything there when we looked. But hey, I'm not going to complain if we do have it. So, let's go ahead and throw you down in there. Lock it up. You can go in there and again, lock it up. And we should be good to go. So... Moment of truth. Is it going to work? First of all, you can go right about there. Which, what? No, I don't want that. I don't want it to look like that. I want it to look better than that. I want it to look like that. There we go. Okay, I shift right click on the one you want, I guess. And that should light up green. At the minute, there's not enough uh, herb in there, I don't think. And this one has used it all up. Do bear in mind, even if there's no plants in there, it will use it up. So uh, be careful of that. And then let's grab our cart. Let's stick it down right about, I'm, I'm thinking like here. And that's the wrong way. Don't, no, no. I want you to go, I, if you're going to go that way, then I want you to do, start over here. Because I kind of want these seeds to get planted down first, so they get the most effect. So I should go ahead and start by pulling up the solar engine. I'm going to set the solar engine to high priority, and the coal engine to low. Watch that, it's going to go the other way. Oh no, it's doing it, it's doing it. And then we just need to put seeds in there, which I don't have, because flipping... Ah, come on, get... Stop. <laughs> okay, because I put all the seeds in the barrel. We do need to provide this thing with at least a couple of seeds. Thank you. And now I'm thinking about it. I'm not quite sure if... Hmm... I don't know if we've got this set up 100% right, because, of course, it's probably going to dump most of the seeds back into the... Actually, we're going to have to take a look at this. Let me have a look. If I put this back down... We have the side thing, and then we have the farmer. For the farmer, do we put the seeds in there? Oh, we do. Okay, so it's like the like the tree farm. It's going to keep a nice little backlog of seeds in there for its own personal use. And then that should just go ahead and start planting all those down. 
like I said, not sure if we're going to need the, the, to use the high grade. So and if we do, I think we're going to have to set something up over by the cargo manager to instantly fill it up with uh, with water as it goes around. But for the most part, uh, oh, actually, I think it might be this. This seems to be doing a good enough job for most of the area. It's probably going to, like, fail when it comes to the middle, maybe. But uh, we'll see how that goes. It, I don't want it to plant anything down here. I don't think it's going to. There's not really uh, any space for it to plant stuff down here. I just want it to go down there because I kind of like it. I think it'll look cool when it goes down there. And it should work. There we go. Look at that. Boom. And then I'll come back up. And it should start, I think, again here. Maybe. I'm hoping this is even. If it's not, it's going to really annoy me. No. No. Why do you do this to me? Oh, are you really not going to hydrate those last two there? Really? I might just have to go and, uh, and hydrate those myself just so it looks a bit more even. But that's the plan. That's what the, the whole thing's supposed to look like. Let's go ahead and actually there is one more thing that I want to fix up before we end the episode here. And that is our tree farm because the wood cutting core has stopped working. So we are going to have to go ahead and grab a couple of diamonds. Uh, I think we're not, we're, I don't think we're going to need that many, but we're going to grab some diamonds. We're going to go fix it up. While we're up there, we'll grab some more saplings so we can go ahead and get our lengths of growth working. Eventually, what we'll have is we'll have a system that automatically takes the saplings from a pier and it takes them to the uh, the alchemical furnace down below the track so they can automatically keep going and constantly provide it with stuffs. Let's see, where about to you? This thing's going to be a pain to track down because although the car stopped, it hasn't stopped. Stop, stop. I need, no. Oh, ah. I think we just stand here. We can stop it. There we go. All right, diamonds. Okay, the durability is on the way up. I have no idea how much. Oh, it only took one diamond. It's not going to take the other one. So I'm assuming that maybe that's going to fill it all the way up. Possibly. I don't know. It's at 20%, so it should last at least uh, a good couple of episodes now. So I'm just going to leave that there. And then I should cut out the trees. The trees look a little bit maltier. And uh, that's because I've been coming back up to, uh, to use my shears on them to get enough herb for the second length of growth. And what we'll do finally before we wrap things up here is grab ourselves a little bit more of these oak saplings and throw them back down into the ark and limbic. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like. It does help out a lot. And as soon as I've done this... Like so. We should probably also put some uh, some actual fuel in there. Like that. And we can have a look at these. Are these things turned on? Uh, I have no idea because I'm not quite sure if they are. I think that one definitely is. This one is on as well. Nice. So these things are both working. These will both increase the uh, the growth rate of all this wheat rounded. So they'll grow a lot faster than they would without it. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please hit like. And I will see you next time.